Hi guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time that you get to listen to this. Thank you so much for tuning in today and for staying with me through this Bible summary from all the way from Genesis to Numbers where we have reached now. Remember, if this podcast is good for you, it could also be good for someone else. So do subscribe, like and share in your natural spaces and natural spaces i mean it could be your friends could be your family members it could be your chama girls it could be your colleagues whatever it is that you find whatever space it is that you find easy to share especially sharing the word of god so today we'll be covering numbers chapter 24 which is a continuation of balak persuading balaam to cast the israelites at this point they have already offered sacrifices in two different locations and the outcome has been the same God has blessed the Israelites and he cannot be manipulated. So let's continue to see if the outcome will be different on this third location. At this point, 21 bulls and 21 rams have already died as sacrificed animals and have lost their lives in this quest. Poor animals, really. <laughs> I was, I'll was i be reading word for word from the easy to read version, so kindly keep track. And this is what it says. I actually really like the first verse because it exposes who Balaam really is. And it says, Balaam saw the Lord wanted to bless Israel. So he did not try to change that by using any kind of magic. But Balaam turned and looked toward the desert. He looked out across the desert and saw all the Israelites. They were camped near the tribes in the different areas. Then the spirit of of God came on him and he gave this message. This message is from Balaam, son of Beor. I am speaking about things I see clearly. These are the words I have heard from God. I saw what God all-powerful showed me. I humbly tell you what I clearly see. People of Jacob, your tents are beautiful. Israelites, your homes are beautiful. You are like rows of palm trees planted by the streams. You are like gardens growing by the rivers. You are like sweet-smelling bushes planted by the, by the Lord. You are like cedar trees growing by the water. You will always have enough water. Enough water for your seed to grow. Your king will be greater than King Agag. Agag. Your kingdom will be very great. God brought them out of Egypt. They are strong like wild ox. They will defeat all their enemies. They will bro- break their bones and shatter their arrows. Israel is like a lion, curled up and lying down. Yes, they are like a young lion. One that, and no one wants to wake him. Anyone who blesses you will be blessed. And anyone who curses you will have great troubles. When Balak heard this, he angrily struck his fist against the hand, his hand and said to Balaam, I called you to come and curse my enemies, but you have blessed them. You have blessed them three times. Now leave and go home. I told you that I would give you a very good payment, but the Lord has caused you to lose your reward. This means that Balaam was not paid even a cent for his things, for the fact that he came here and blessed the Israelites instead of instead of uh, cursing them. And Balak is telling him, I was to pay you, but now because you're there obeying your God, obeying, obeying God and saying things that are blessing to Israel, I'm, I'm not going to pay you. And you can actually blame that God that you are you are representing so balaam said to balak you sent men to ask me to come don't you remember what i told them i said even if balak gives me the most beautiful house filled with silver and gold i can still i can say only what the lord commands me to say i cannot do anything myself good or bad i must say what the lord commands Now I am going back to my own people, but I will give you this warning. I will tell you what the Israelites will do to you and your people in the future. So this was Balaam's last message. Then then Balaam gave this message. This message is from Balaam, son of Beor. I am speaking about things I see clearly. I had this message from God. I learned what God most high taught me. I saw what God all powerful showed me. I humbly tell you what I clearly see. I see him him coming, but not now. I see him coming, but not soon. A star will come from the family of Jacob. A new ruler will come from the Israelites. He will smash the heads of the Moabites and crush the heads of all sons of Sheth. Israel will grow strong. He will get the land of Edom. 
he will get the land of Seir and Seir and his enemies. A new ruler will come from the family of Jacob. That ruler will destroy the people left alive in that city. Then Balaam saw the Amalek. Amalekites and said this, Amalek is a strong of is the strongest of all nations, but even Amalek will be destroyed. Then Balaam saw the Kenites and said to this, You believe that your country is safe, safe like a bird's nest high on the mountain, but you Kenites will be destroyed. Just as the Lord destroyed Cain, Assyria will make you prisoners. Then Balaam said this, Now no one can live when God does this. Ships will come from Cyprus. They will defeat Assyria and Eber, but those ships will also be destroyed. Then Balaam got up and went back home, and Balaam went on his way. Wow, and that's basically the end of that chapter. There's a lot to learn from this chapter. We can learn that um, that instead of actually cursing the Israelites, he came and blessed them. And not, did, not only did he bless them, that he actually prophesied good thing over them. But please note that even as Balaam is doing all this, the spirit of God has actually come on him. This is not the Balaam. This is not necessarily how Balaam would have done this. But this is being done, and this all this is being said because the spirit of God has come upon him. So did you notice that the last two times, you know, like where every time Balaam would would uh, would. Uh, tell Balak to stay behind as he went to seek the Lord, yet at that time he did not. The first time when, when they built the seven altars and they sacrificed the ram and the bull, Balak, Balaam said to Balak, you stay here while I go over there and seek the Lord. That was the first time. The second time he did the same. They did the seven altars, they sacrificed the animals, and then he told Balak, stay here, and then I'm going to go over there and seek the Lord. But at that time, the Bible actually records let me actually read from what it says in the message version in the first chap in the first verse. It says that let's hold on a little bit. It says by by now Balaam realizes that God wants to bless Israel. So he did not work in any sorcery as he had as he had done earlier. So that means every time Balaam would walk away, every time he would tell Bal- Balak, you stay here, and then I'm gonna go over there to supposedly seek the Lord and seek the Lord here in quotes, a little further from Balak, he would go and try to use some magic, some sorcery, some enchantments, enchantments just so that he could somehow curse the Israelites and get paid. But his magic and sorcery and enchantment failed him every time. Because every time he came back, the, the Lord actually, the spirit of the Lord came over him and every time he opened his mouth, he ended up blessing Israelites. That's the one thing that we, we it actually doesn't say in the other in the like the chapters before. It actually says that in at the beginning of chapter 24 that at this point Balaam was like, you know what? Clearly, God is going to bless these people. So there's no point of me walking even further and going a little bit further to try my own magic and so, so let me just stand here and the, that the Lord will just speak through me because that is exactly what is going to happen. And this resulted to him not getting paid for his services. And this must have been really, really frustrating for him. As he was willing to do anything to get paid. Anything to get paid. Because according to the book of Revelation, as in actually the story of Balaam, is written in the book of (laughs) Revelation. That's every time I hear the book of Revelation, I'm like, gosh, we will get there. And then I don't even know what I'll be saying about that book. But see, the Lord... Grace, the Lord's grace is sufficient. We'll figure out what to say at that time. So anyway, the story of Balaam is written even in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Balaam later told King Balak how to get the Israelites to commit sin by enticing them with sexual immorality and food sacrifices to idol. The Israelites fell into trans- to this to this temptation due to these traps and God sent a deadly plague to them. This is what we will see happening in the next chapters of Numbers. So what happened is that when Balaam was unable to cast the Israelites, he was like, you know what? I'm unable to cast these people. I'm not going to get paid by this king. So now let me actually teach him how to trick the Israelites so that they can sin. And in doing this, he was hoping that God would get upset with the Israelites and finally cast him. And then finally, he would get paid. As in, that is just how far and how, where? 
<laughs> if nothing, Balaam was a very determined false prophet. If nothing at all, he was determined to get his pay no matter what. He was like, okay, trying using my sorcery is not working. So let's t- trick the Israelites to actually sin. Let's trick them into sexual immorality. Let's trick them into eating food that has been have it has been I- offered to idol gods so that they can sin, so that God can be angry with them and he can curse them and finally I can get paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if nothing, if nothing, Balaam was a very determined false prophet. And sometimes I ask myself, are there such false prophets in this day? Who will put up theatrics, they will pay actors to testify to have gotten well after using some anointed holy water. Are there such false prophets who sound just right when you listen to them? Because Balaam at some point sounded like a godly prophet. Like he started out good, like he's actually good, godly, like you know, he's almost like masquerading as a good godly prophet because every time he keeps saying i'll only say what the lord asks me today to say but when he walks away he goes to try some magic and some sorcery and some enchantments to just get god to not i don't even know like he sounds great he sounds like a good godly prophet but he actually is not so are there prophets like Balaam who sound just like they sound, sound like godly prophets and their intentions but their intentions are always fueled by greed. His speech might blind everyone and to make to make him think that he is godly but his intentions are fueled by greed. Are there such false prophets who will use and twist the word of God to fit their agenda? So and will do anything in the determination to get their pay, to get the money, to get you guys to, you know, give them money. Unfortunately, the answer is yes. I know. It's so unfortunate. So now what? What do we do? I mean, we are living here. There are false prophets in everywhere. How do we not get ourselves mixed up and tricked into thinking that these false prophets are godly? The answer to that is be like the Bereans. The Bereans in chapter Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says that the people in Berea were more open minded than those in the Salonica. They were so glad to hear the message, Paul told them, but they studied the scripture every day to make sure that what they had was really true. Another version says that the Bereans actually received the word with a lot of enthusiasm. But they studied the word. They started to confirm. They started to make sure that what it is that Paul was teaching, what it is that they heard him say, was actually true. Don't just go by what you hear. Examine it to see whether what is being taught is true. As you listen to this podcast, have your Bible there. Pause. Put me on pause and confirm that Numbers 24 actually says what I am saying. When watching something, pause it. Pause that someone. Pause that video. When they say a Bible verse, pause it and confirm and even go further to ask yourself questions like, who was this written to? What was the context of this message and how can I apply it in my life? Ask the Holy Spirit who is so willing, he is so ready, as a matter of fact that is part of his JD. Ask him to give you the enlightenment, enlightenment to understand the scripture for yourself. Imagine, don't be a lazy Christian. Do not be a lazy Christian. Examine the scripture. This is one of the surest ways to not fall into the traps and the gimmicks of false prophets. This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore.